So now it's time to cache the images as we've already discovered. This is going to be a lot quicker, of course, because we're doing image processing. Now, I really like using this service provider for caching. It's really, really flexible. And we're going to go ahead and implement this, set up file based caching. But of course, later down the line, if you wanted to use this package, it's very, very flexible. So you can use any uh, caching drive you want. So let's come over and install this first of all, and we will look at how we set this up. So very simply do a composer require on this, wait for it to finish and we'll go get set up. Okay, so that's done. I'll leave a link to this in the course link so you can go ahead and grab this. Let's go over and start to create out a caching directory. Uh, maybe we had another directory with a cache directory in it. In this case, what I'm gonna do is literally just create a cache directory in here and then maybe have some kind of images directory inside of this. But of course, feel free to structure this however you want. Okay, so now that we've got this directory, of course, what we need to do with this service provider is register it on our application as we've done with everything else. And then of course, pass in the options as well to say where we're caching to, uh, which driver we're using and all that kind of stuff. So somewhere around here, let's go ahead and register this. And this is under a or this package namespace and it's under Silex provider and it's a cache service provider. And now what we need to do is go ahead and pass in our options. So cache options in here, and then we can just go ahead and pass these in. Now this is really simple. We just need a driver, which is a file based driver. And we need the cache directory, which we use if we're using file based caching. Now in this case, we can just grab the current directory. We can go back into cache and then into images. And that is pretty much it. So now we can use this inside of our route to retrieve an image from the cache if it's previously uh, been stored. Now, the way that we're going to do this is, first of all, attempt to uh, get from the cache. And if it doesn't exist, so if it's not in there, we're going to process the image as we're doing down below, and then we're going to store it into the cache. So this is just a kind of uh, common way to look at, look something up in a cache. If it's not in there, we go ahead and do whatever we need to do. We store it back into the cache. And then on the next request, if we do attempt to get it from the cache, we're probably likely to see it in there and we can just use that value from the cache. So let's go and first of all, say that our placeholder is instead of this. So we'll add this into a conditional. We want to say app cache. So this is how we access uh, that package. Now we want to go ahead and fetch at a particular key. Now what we want to cache by is the width and the height. So if we say uh, we request a 200 by 500 image, we want to grab a random image. We want to cache this. And the next time we request 200 by 500, this is simply returned from the cache. Now, the only downside to this is you're always going to get the same picture, but there's not really a way around it. You can't then reprocess another random image, but not cache it. So that's really the only way to get around this. So what we do is we fetch by a specific key. We're going to choose the key and this is going to be the file name. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop these in here. We're going to separate these out by a colon and then we're going to say the width and we're going to say the height like so. So that's just pretty standard. And what we're going to do is at the same time as uh, fetching this, we're going to go ahead and grab the cache key so we can store this at that particular key as we've checked it. So we're kind of checking it, setting the key, and then down here, we can use that same key to go ahead and set it just so we don't have to repeat ourselves, or repeat any code. Okay. So now down here, if the placeholder is false, which will be returned if we don't have anything in the cache, we want to store it into the cache. And to do this, we only need to do this when we can't retrieve it from the cache. So this is the only time we're ever going to be processing an image. So now what we can do is after this, we can store it into the cache and then we can return the version of that image. So uh, we'll return this if it's not in the cache. We'll go ahead and store it here otherwise. And then on the next request, this will be true or it will at least hold a value. So then we'll just return the placeholder. This is why we're using the same name. So now down here, we're just going to say app cache and we're going to store this at the cache key that we assigned as we looked it up. And we're simply going to place the placeholder into the cache. So just to kind of reiterate, if you are new to caching, 
Again, we check if this is in the cache, setting the cache key. If it's not, we process the image and store it in the cache. And then either way, whether it is in the cache or not in the cache, we return with that image. Very, very simple. Let's go over. We know that we're getting a time of about 137 to 150 milliseconds. Give it a refresh. This time around, it will be a little bit slower because it's the first request. But now when we refresh again, and it looks like we've got a little error. So let's go ahead and just have a look. So file name in web on line eight. Let's have a look here. Ah, of course. So in this case, it's not file name. It is in fact image file name. But I think in this case, actually, we could probably just get rid of that. I think the width and the height is enough to uh, satisfy uh, our cache key. So give this another refresh and we see again 153 milliseconds. But now when we refresh, we're getting a much lower response time because of course what's happening now is it's just being pulled out of the cache, not manipulated anyway, and just returned to the user. So there we go. That is our caching of our images done very, very simply using that package. Uh, very nice to work with. And what we can now move on to is in the next part, looking at if we perhaps want a specific image to be pulled out. So for example, I might want to say image equals and then give the ID of the image that I always want then we can use that to specifically return an image that we want. So at the moment it's not going to work, but we need to do a little bit of updating to use a specific image if we want to.